Welcome to the Growth House Podcast. I am Jesse Ray, and I'm here with my good friend, Sierra Porter. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Who okay. is Sierra Porter? Well, Sierra, I'm a photographer. I'm a videographer. I travel a lot for photo and video, and I have a swimwear brand, Amini, that I think we're going to talk about a little bit. Yep. And yeah, I come from a really big family. I moved to Arizona like a year and a half ago, and we met, what, like a month ago, two months ago? A couple months back, yeah, through Derek. Yeah. Shout out DMAC. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Derek. Good old Derek. <laughs> but yeah, I want to kind of start from the beginning. What like what started your entrepreneur journey? Because you have the swimwear line, photography. Have you ever had a W two or has that just been straight into after college, straight into, you know, your own your own business? Yeah, so well, it's been straight into my own business. I never like actually had a job that's real. I mean, I think it's a real job, but you know, what people consider a real job. But yeah, going back I did kind of always like to sell things and they weren't always, you know, my things. <laughs> I would steal from, not steal, I was like six. and I thought we were done with like books or toys and I could just go around the neighborhood and like with my wagon and have a garage sale out of my wagon. And so I've always like, you know, kind of thought about making money. But then when I was little, I also was always stealing my mom's film camera or her mm -hmm. video camera and just taking pictures, like making videos. I would drag my siblings out and make them put on weird outfits and do photo shoots. So like. All of this has kind of been in my blood. And you have a big family. You yes. have how many brothers and sisters? I have five brothers and two sisters. Five brothers and two sisters. And they were down. The brothers were down to put on the, the outfits. And oh, yeah. They were. It was like, when they were like three, they didn't know any better. <laughs> it took advantage of your younger siblings. <laughs> it took advantage. Siblings. Got it. But then, like, when they get older, they, now they ask me because yeah. now I'm actually, you know, like, decent in it. Right. But, so, they've always been down. So now you're the stylist? Well. I'm not the stylist. Okay. I'm just the photographer. There you go. You know how to make them look good on camera. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I like it. So let's dive into Amini. What is the backstory there? Like, why'd you create it? So Amini, okay, so one of my friends I first would travel with all the time, we would travel and like shoot for brands on location as a way to like get our travels paid for. Mm -hmm. And one time we were, so we went to Vietnam and we like shot swimwear, like she would model, I would take the pictures. Then we went to Thailand and Everyone that like I reached out to like didn't answer me and that was the first time that happened and I just got a bit annoyed. So I was like, whatever, I'll make a swimmer brand and it'll just be better and cuter than theirs. And so that was kind of like my ego kind of yeah. <laughs> gave me the idea, but I've always loved the ocean. And you know, I just knew if I started a brand that I wanted it to be sustainable and ethical because I, at that point, learned a little bit about fast fashion and like what it does to the country and what it does to the people that produce everything. And so that was kind of like the idea of it. And I just reached out to my friend. Mm. She was down to partner with me and it started like a week later. <laughs> That's awesome. When, when was this timeline was? It launched in July, it'll be two years ago that two it like years. launch launched, yeah. but we probably worked on it for almost a year before it launched. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So three years running kind of in the mix. What about exactly. the whole sustainability piece? You want to kind of like talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, I don't even know how that has become so important to me. Like, I don't remember when it started, but I just always, like I said, love the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I've just seen different documentaries or different videos about how humans are just pretty much destroying it. And like, the more we destroy it, like, that has a terrible effect on us. And I just think anything that God has given us, we're supposed to steward well. And I just mm -hmm. don't think we're stewarding our planet well. Mm -hmm. And it's like so beautiful. And like, creation is so important. And we're kind of just. I don't know. I feel like the way we think about it is so selfish. So I just knew if I had a brand, I wanted it to like pour back into the planet and pour back into people instead of like stripping it. Mm. So. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I love when, you know, brands have a bigger vision than just, you know, the clothing or apparel or whatever right. it is. So I love that. What about year one? So actually, let's talk about, yeah, the whole year. So it took you a year to really get this thing launched. What right. were you doing like during that year? Well, I never studied fashion or like knew how to design anything. And so we were just Googling, trying to find a manufacturer that was sustainable and like had great practices and actually paid the people that made the stuff. Mm. And we finally found one. And then I like got to the design process and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> you're so, not a designer? No, okay. this is like my first yeah. anything. Okay. And so we would like try to sketch stuff and we sent it in for like our first samples. <laughs> and I wish I had brought the samples with me because they were so bad. Like it's embarrassing. Like clip art bad or no? It's where like are we going? it's like when they sent in, 
I thought I like, had a vision of what I drew and like what it would look like when they mm. sent me like the finished product. And then they sent it in, and it was like I see like they did exactly what I told them to do, but what I told, like it was just so wrong. It was not what I thought was yeah. in my head, and so it was a learning process. So we had you know do quite a few sample rounds, mm -hmm. and then um, you know get an LLC, make a website, do shoots, all that stuff. So how was that design process? Did you end up like? going on a website to find a third party, someone freelance to design it, or do you have Oh no, we just figured it out. Oh, you guys just yeah. figured it out? Yeah, so we still design them. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, it took us a second, yeah. but we got it, so. So it got launched, what year is this, 2019 you said? Uh, 2020 it launched, because it'll okay. be two years this year. Right, okay, 2020, mm -hmm. and then how was that like first couple of months? It was awesome, like we, I, we had so much support from like friends and family and I think we had this idea that like oh because we have good images and because we have like so many friends and stuff like this will just like pop off and right. everyone in the world is going to be obsessed and it's going to be like the biggest thing and like that's not how it happened but it's still like we learned so much in that first year um, and we had a lot of fun and it didn't like I mean it did great it, we made back everything that we put in and we just keep you know putting it back in and you know, expanding even more. We were kind of getting into clothing now. Mm -hmm. And so it's been fun. I think we had like, I'm a dreamer. So I had unrealistic expectations. Like I legitimately thought it would be like Armani by now. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way, side note, I was pronouncing Amini wrong. And so I was telling all my friends like, yeah, I know the person who designs and created Armani. And they would look at me kind of like confused, but also like, that's really cool. And then it took me a while to realize Armani's a really big No, brand. it's like massive, yeah. it's huge. so I can't take credit for that. But maybe one day, hopefully. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll media will get there. We'll get there. That's awesome. So year two, first couple months, you have this vision of it's going to pop off. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone who starts an LLC in a business, that's kind of what happens. Yeah. And then you have great support from your family and friends. Mm -hmm. And then what? how do you, especially with like sales, how do you market? How do you, how'd you get a bigger audience than just outside that inner circle that's for your friends and family? I think that's what we were kind of confused on because we tried like the whole influencer route at first and mm -hmm. it just like failed miserably. Like people that we would like pay to shoot and to post like just wouldn't. Or like people that we sent stuff for free and they said they would shoot, like just kept the stuff and ghosted us. So like really? it was just like the influencer world is mean. <laughs> and so we stopped going that route. We tried Instagram like paid ads, but I just think that's so saturated now that it's just, everything's lost in the sauce. Mm -hmm. And so we really just started like guerrilla marketing. I think that's what it's called now. Yeah. Is that like when you're out in the streets? Not like actually in yeah. the streets, but like we would DM people, we'd email people, we would just, you know, do whatever we could to get the name out there. And then like when we first started getting kind of consistent orders from like, we we're like, do you know this person? Like, I don't know this person, do you know this person? Like, we got so yeah, excited. excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and then we knew, I think part of it is just time and like word mm -hmm. of mouth and like things, if you do things well, and if you make people feel valued, like they'll tell other people and I don't know, it's doing so much better this year than the first year. So that's amazing. Yeah. So guerrilla marketing was a tactic that ended up working as well as just people now spreading the word. Yeah. And we also had like pop up shops and we would try to market those really well. And those do incredible for us every time. Mm. And so I don't know, just try to be creative with it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you reach out to like a specific target audience? Like, um, like you said, influencers, which I do want to ask you about that, how that all, you know, worked out. It doesn't sound like it worked out that well. <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, so like pop-up shops, what else did you guys do to market? And did you target specific, you know, types of people, you know, fitness trainers, coaches, yeah. that sort of audience? No, I mean, with the Instagram stuff, we just targeted people that we felt like cared about the same things that we cared about, like mm -hmm. had similar values. Like it doesn't matter how old you are, like what you look like or any of those things like you don't have to be crazy fit like a fitness mm. trainer or like perfect look like influencers like just like care about people and care about the planet and we think that that aligns with what we align with and mm -hmm. so honestly it's like been through conversations with random people like yeah. I'll run into girls wherever and we get to talking and like I'll give them like I have these little discount cards I'll hand those out like just random conversations yeah. honestly and I feel like that's been better for us like I don't know I know like marketing and ads and all that stuff is important but it's been out of the organic stuff that we've had the most That's uh, awesome. growth. Yeah. That's so. cool. So how much more growth did you have this past year? Oh, we like over tripled like the first year, I think. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it's been good. It's been fun. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious, you know, you've had a lot of growth 
two and a half, I guess three years, but two years of actually officially mm -hmm. in business with some like big challenges besides social media influencers ghosting you? Yeah, that was a challenge. Um, like, uh, like I said before, figuring out how to design was a challenge, yeah. but I think like the biggest challenge, which I see as a blessing, I mean, everyone says like, don't go into business with your friends. And mm. like the girl that I'm a partner with, we've, she was my first friend when I moved to Missouri, like we went through junior high, high school, college, like all the same school. And it's been like very revealing of like your own pride and your own ego stuff. Because like being 50-50 on something, like you want it to go your way or the highway. You know what I mean? Like it just reveals a lot about yourself that you kind of, I don't know. I think you can always like blame on the other person or like you have these hard conversations and you can always feel like you're in the right and like not even choose to see their perspective. But through our hard conversations, I feel like we've both grown so much and it's just... I don't know. I think that that's a good thing, but it is challenging. Yeah. yeah. How do you balance or can you balance between a friendship and a business partner? Do you have like, all right, hey, focus, we're in you know business mode and then you guys hang outside and then you're friends or is it intermingle and it just all, you know, I think, well, she's one now. still in Missouri, so I'm okay. here now. So like we have, we've, it's been a learning process, Yeah. but now we've kind of gotten in our rhythm of like, okay, on these certain days we have these like meetings dedicated to a meanie and on these mm -hmm. certain days like we talk about these topics or like these topics and like we're all we talk every day like texting but mm -hmm. I think having designated times that are business times to go through everything has helped so much but like when we're together like I was just in Kansas City or she'll come out here for shoots and like and stuff like that I mean like we're friends like it's just fun right so it's like fun to do business with your friend so yeah. I think that whole like don't do business with your friends thing is bad advice unless it's like you have a shady friend mm. but like I trust her with everything it's just, you know, it's difficult sometimes to share ideas. <laughs> oh, for sure. What was some characteristics about her that made you trust her to go into business? Because, like, I've had a story where I went into business with my friend. The integrity really wasn't there. So once we started making money, it was like, we got a problem now. Yeah. So what were some of the things that you looked for? I mean, the most important thing to both of us is, like, our faith. Mm. And so when you have that common ground of, you know, you live your life for Jesus and like we're doing this and we even like both agree on like tithing 10% of like the mm -hmm. profits and everything like there's just so many things that we agree on that we and we've known each other for how long now like 12 years it's like you know someone's heart and you know their character and you know if they're trying to walk their life a certain way like a set apart way that you can kind of lean on them so. mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome yeah so how would you describe a meanie if you had like one sentence or even one word well, a meanie, it means believe. Oh, well, let's, in let's dive into that. What is a meanie? What is a meanie? Yeah, it means believe. It's um, in a language, it's Swahili. Mm -hmm. So I went to Kenya. I spent time in Kenya and like fell in love with the kids that I spent time with there. And her family like hosted kids from Uganda, I think. Mm -hmm. And like both countries speak Swahili. So we were like trying to find words that we thought were awesome yeah. because we both care about those places. And we landed on a meanie. And I don't know, it just, like I said, our faith is important to both of us. And I just think we both have this kind of big idea that we can kind of like change the world with like our little brand. And so, mm -hmm. I don't know, I heard this quote one of my friends told me one time, like, I th he wrote it down somewhere. He's actually really cool. He like, every hotel he goes into, he'll like take the art off the wall and like write a message and then like put it back. And like maybe if someone finds it one day, <laughs> like they find it. But one thing that he sent me a picture of that he wrote was, um, shoot, let me think about it real quick. It was like, if you don't believe that we can change the world, then you just won't be one of the people that does. Like, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean? Lot. So I think that really stuck with me. And it's like, we can have this crazy dream that we're gonna change the world and maybe we don't, but maybe we do, but maybe we just changed some one person's world. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, that word is just powerful with everything we do with our brand. No, I love it. And obviously people can see, you know, online, we'll put in the show notes, you know, where you can look at the brand and the full line that you have. What are some of the things that you have? I know you have swimsuits, but then also you have, you drop more like shirts and t-shirts. Yeah, we have sweatshirts. Those are sold out. I don't think we'll restock those till like the fall. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then t-shirts, but those also are sold out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. I tried to get one and she's like, yeah, you're too slow. So <laughs> yeah. next order, I got to Yeah, gotta we'll do a pre-order again. But so. So what's the, um, what was the thought process there? Because, you know, Growth House, we're going to have some apparel, some merch. Um, what was your thought process on kind of doing a limited release and then you design new, you know, mm -hmm. new apparel each time or are you going to do the same apparel and then just say, you know, we stock yeah, back up? We haven't, I mean, we want to keep expanding and doing new stuff, but we'll still like restock certain things just because, you know, they did so well. Right. But 
I don't know. I just had so many dudes that would reach out like, when are you making swim trucks? Like, when are you like gonna have a men's line? And I was like, like I might as well make something. So I just made like, well. <laughs> unisex sweatshirts and t-shirts and like mostly boys bought them. So yeah. I kind of think we have to get into that side of things soon. So I, no trunks yet. I just don't, I, I need like a second to nail swim design because yeah. <laughs> that was new to me two years ago. And then I'll dive into swim trunks, but that seems kind of hard, but I'll get there. There you go. See, like, we need some, especially for the ice baths. Oh. I've heard about those. I'm not participating. Yeah, we'll get you one day. 6 a.m. <laughs> no. ice bath at the girl's house. I get my beauty sleep and I don't go in cold things. <sighs> one day, one day. <laughs> so how many different, um, I guess, designs do you have on the women's swim line? Oh, I don't even know the exact number. Not like a ton. We have mm -hmm. different colorways and stuff, but I think we have <clears throat> like maybe five or six different tops now and three different bottoms, but we have new stuff coming, like the new shipment's getting in. I mean, what's the, it's the 20th? It's supposed to ship mm -hmm. on the 25th. Okay. So we have new stuff coming this summer. Nice, that's exciting. I know. I Stay know. tuned. Stay tuned. That's awesome. <laughs> so are you down to dive a little bit deeper into marketing and, and some, yeah, I yeah. would just say just dive in even deeper to like how you market, how you brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from my, you know, looking at Amini, it's very classy. And for myself with the growth house, I'm realizing I should have probably done this before and we're really working on it right now, but it seems like you have a very strict filter system mm -hmm. on how you want to portray the brand and the perception of the brand right. and stay true to your core values. I know faith is huge in your life. Same with me. So just trying to figure out, you know, how to portray the best image of your brand to stay, you know, grounded in who you are and who the business, what the business really is. Yeah. So with all, with all that being said, did you create like, all right, here's our filter system that we have to make sure our images yeah you know I mean? part of it's been like we we had an idea we didn't like write down exactly a filter system but we knew what we wanted the brand to look like we knew we wanted it to be classy we knew that it didn't we didn't want it's really hard with swimwear because sure. like obviously like your body's like quite exposed but we didn't want to be like you're selling sex appeal right because i don't know i just think like there's a time and a place for a swimsuit but like it doesn't have to be made to be like an inappropriate thing mm -hmm. um and so I really wanted the focus to be on the ocean and like mm. the adventures you have in the ocean and like just being free spirited and just being in the moment. And I think hopefully we accomplish that. But yeah. we've kind of gotten more strict with everything lately because I think it was hard because like I don't live by an ocean. Mm. And so <laughs> it's like every time we need to shoot something, it's like a trip. But then I would just be like, oh, we can just shoot at the pool. But then I was like, I started posting those pictures. I'm like, that's just not like us. And so we had to like mm. re, you know, narrow the filter and... I think we're getting back on track with everything but yeah i just think knowing like you said our core values it doesn't align with like trying to just like sell like a hot girl with a hot body and like a hot swimsuit like that wasn't ever what it was about right it was just about like having fun and playing the waves right you know? yeah <laughs> so question if like a big time influencer posted your you know swimwear she's wearing it but it doesn't fit your you know criteria or brand would you repost that or would you we just... share pretty much everything we're tagged in on our stories yeah. um there has been like situations where it's like people take us in pictures and like we want to repost them and so we'll like get collect all the pictures that people tag us in and like whichever one matches our vibe the most mm -hmm. we'll put like the first in the swipe and mm -hmm. then people can like swipe through and like see all the different people that have like tagged us and are wearing it out in the world so that's right. kind of like our hack <laughs> so put on my I put them the towards the back. Them back. <laughs> yeah, they can go to the back. Okay. I'm yeah. about to steal that idea. Yeah. I mean, it works. That's awesome. So, was that was that hard in the beginning? Or did you just, got you both knew right away, like, this is what we wanted to be, and you never strayed away? Or was there a time where it's like, you know, halfway through, you're like, ah, oh, should we do more of this? Especially maybe in the beginning when, you know, you had the spike in family and friend sales, but then it maybe slowed down and then it picked back up. Was there any internal battle? Um, I think the only internal battle, I mean, we both like have a hard time posting, like it's weird that we went to somewhere because we both like don't like to just post bikini pictures all the time, like on right. our personal pages. So it was kind of hard to like market on our own Instagrams, which like have way more followers than the Amini one. We're figuring it out. There's a tasteful way to do it, <laughs> but I don't know. We've never really strayed from wanting it to be, you know, classy and feminine and fun, but like not aggressive, like soft porn. Right. <laughs> So, I don't know, it hasn't been that much of an internal battle, but it's just been kind of tricky to handle sometimes. Right. What's been like the funnest experience or the funnest part about this journey? 
The okay, so every year we have like new faces of Amini. We call them like our Amini rookies, and okay. we'll go to like California and do this big shoot like one weekend, and it's so fun. Like everyone at the end always ends up being best friends. We just like stop taking pictures and just playing in the ocean together. Like it's literally the best time ever, and everyone has stayed friends. Like we're all still in each other's lives, and it's just a cool experience. And hopefully one day like we'll actually be able to pay them. <laughs> right now they just do it for free, but it's fun. And it's a good experience, and I don't know, I just love that part of it, connecting with people. That's so cool. So wait, how do you get these rookie faces? Oh, we reach just out say... To, reach out to you guys, say I love your clothing brand. Every time like it's time for new ones, <clears throat> we'll like post about on Instagram, people will email their auditions. Mm. Yeah, so... I'm gonna steal that one too. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> about, write it down. All right? That's super cool. So, I guess probably one of my last questions is... For someone starting the entrepreneur journey, literally year one, mm -hmm. what is your advice to them? I think like just get started. Like I'm very embarrassed by some of our designs at the beginning and like some of the stuff we had on our website, but you can always like grow and change it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to start because a lot of people, it's scary to start something new because you want to have all your ducks in a row and like understand everything. Like. There's so many things that we did wrong or like just didn't fully understand when we started, but like we just started it. Mm. And I mean, I think literally just now, like we could have probably gotten in like legal trouble because we didn't have one of the documents we were supposed to have. We just figured that out. But like, you that's haven't okay. been paying taxes, it's all right. No, 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 we paid our taxes. Long. We paid our taxes, but it was like something else. I don't won't mention it. Yeah, don't mention it. <laughs> but I really just think it's getting over the hurdle of starting. That's a great point. A lot of people, I think, especially want to be entrepreneurs, have that. You know, analysis by paralysis. Yeah, they call it. So, that's I think you point. also have to be kind of discerning of who you share your dreams with, because there are going to be people in your life that really lift you up and like speak life into you and like pour into that and believe in you. And there's going to be people that are like point out the flaws in your ideas, mm. and that can be really defeating when you're still in the process of like really putting your foot down and doing it. Mm -hmm. Having someone tell you that it's like dumb or like just questioning it is hard to hear. Yeah. So I just think being selective. That's, that's so true. Um, at the Growth House, we kind of our motto is you become who you surround yourself mm -hmm. with. Have you had that? Has that had a big impact? Sounds like it has in your life on, you know, making sure your friendships are intentional, you're mm -hmm. connecting with the right people, you surround yourself with that, you know, positive energy. Yeah, that's something that my parents have told us, like I, one of my first memories in life, I feel like, is them always getting on us about who we surround ourselves with. And I think when you're a kid, you don't really, understand like how important that is because you feel like you're just yourself like it doesn't matter like you're just gonna be yourself no matter who you're around mm. but it wasn't until I got to like college and I was living with one group of people and then like the next year I was living with people who like love the Lord and are trying to like walk differently that I saw like yeah you can know who you are but you are very heavily influenced by the people that you surround yourself with and that's not like a weak thing like it's important we were made to have relationships and those were made to shape and mold us. And I don't know, I think that it's become very uh, revealing to me. My parents are always right, unfortunately. <laughs> Gotta listen to the parents, right? Yeah. That's so cool. Part. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap it up. How can they find you? <coughs> oh, you can find me on Instagram. Well, the Amini Instagram is at Amini Swim. My Instagram is at Sierra Porter. And then there's links and you can find other things too. we'll get all the links you can find it pretty easily in the, in the show notes yeah. but sierra it's an honor to know you and you know continue yeah. our friendship and i'm glad that derek connected us thanks for having me good and, job uh, starting your podcast i appreciate it so thanks for being here yeah, sierra for sure all right all right there you go deuces nice. <laughs>